Question 8. Lactic acid is the only monomer needed to form polymer polylactic acid. PLA. Part A1. Draw a short length of PLA polymer, including a minimum two monomer residues. The methyl groups may be written as this one the CH3 but all the other spawn should be fully displayed so just follow the methyl groups you can do like this the others all displayed means the CH bond CO bond all display now this is the answer that you should give this one okay how to form this one Let's use the two monomer because the this lactic acid is has two functional group hydroxyl and the carboxyl. The hydroxyl means the OH will react with the COOH and it will undergo condensation. So means it will react and form H2O. So this one will form H2O. And after that, the new bonds form means the C and this O will form a new bond and to form ester, ester group. So means it's going to be something like this, means the ester groups here is continued by the CH3, sorry, CH, CH3 and O with another group. This one also Okay, after this O, it will be CH, CH3, CO double bond. So, and this structure continue. What you need to show is the two residue. Means, uh, because it said minimum two monomer residue. Uh, these are the two monomer residue. This one and this one. Right? And another requirement is uh, label one repeat unit of this uh, polylactic acid. Uh, so you must label at least one, let's say from this, this one, to the CO double bond, right? So this is one repeat unit. Then next to this O then is uh, another CO double bond, then it's continue the same structure. Uh, so this we call repeat unit. So now, part two. Give the name of the type of the polymerization involved uh, in the formations of PLA and the name of functional group that form between the monomers. So now, the type of polymerization is condensation. Uh, generally, just two types. Uh, one is uh, addition, polymerization, and condensation. Because this one involves two functional groups. Uh, so it's a condensation reaction so the type is condensation functional groups that form is ester COO part 3 predict whether PLA is ready to be degraded means uh, readily biodegradable so of course it's, uh, it's able to be degraded or it can be biodegraded uh, because uh, it has the ester group so the ester group is the one that uh, can be hydrolyzed when something that can hydrolyze means it can be degraded easily means it still can react with others no? uh, so whenever the compound is has carbonyl groups especially the polymer with carbonyl groups normally is uh, more reactive and it can be degraded so that's why answer is yes Okay, because it has the acid group and it can undergo hydrolysis. For the part B, this one is a proton and ML. Uh, you spec the same uh, compound, the lactic acid. And uh, this uh, figure 8.1 is the proton and ML of the acid, means the lactic acid. So it has a 
one, two, three, four, four signals. Uh, this one, the signals at zero is a standard. So not really counted as a signal. So the signal is this one. One, two, three, four. When you see the signal is has, uh, let's say, one peak like this, so we call singlet. When it's four peaks, it means quartet. Two peaks is doublet. And from here, how to form this singlet, quartet, doublets? Let's start with the this one, the methyl groups. The methyl group, the protons in this methyl group as one group. So it will couple with the protons on the adjacent carbon. So this one, one plus one is two. So we know that the doublets that form here is belongs to this proton. How about the quartet? So the quartet now we need to use another proton. So this proton must be the CH here. The CH as one group, it will couple with the proton on adjacent carbon, which are these three. So one now is past three, so it will form quartet. It means this quartet is for this proton. This proton. And now remain two singlet uh, because this H, this proton is bonded to O, so it will not really couple with others, so it's a singlet. And this one is uh, this. This signal is for this hydrogen. From the tables, you will know. You will know later. Uh, it's around five. It's actually here. Okay, zero point five to six. And of course, the last one, the singlet is here. This one, uh, the COOH. Uh, this proton also will not couple with others. It's a singlet, and this peak is for this proton. Uh, so therefore, the four peaks is for four different proton. Okay, now fill up the table. Uh, just follow the the explanation that uh, I told you just now. Okay, so uh, let's start with the COOH. Okay, COOH uh, is the chemical shift at chop here. You see this one. So the chemical shift that uh, at this chop ppm is belongs to the COOH, the proton in COOH. So therefore, you just need to put the the chemical shift is chopped. Okay, the name the splitting pattern so this is a singlet so the signal with one peak so it's with sig, uh, is singlet s-i-n-g-l-e-t for this uh, ch uh, this one this one will couple with this three these three so it's one plus three is a quartet so it's the four four peaks just now Right, and these four peaks, this signal is around 4.4 .4 here, here, 4.4. For OH, uh, it's a singlet, I told you already, this one. And this proton will be here, around 0 0.5 to 6 means is this one. Okay, again, is this one, uh, 5. At 5 ppm, so this signal is uh, belongs to this proton. The OH. So you just put chemical shift is five, and the name of splitting pattern is singlet. Okay, for the CH three now, CH three. The CH three means this one. These three proton will couple with this proton only. So it's one plus one is a doublet. So and this tablet is uh, uh, at uh, 1.6, around 1.6 here, this one, 1.6. So therefore, uh, okay, this, uh, these are the, the answer, right, for the, all the four signals. Part two, 
Name the substance responsible for the peak at uh, chemical shift zero. Uh, this is a standard I told you. Uh, or you can put the uh, tetramethylsilane. This is a full name. Uh, how it looks like is this. Lah. So the uh, silicon with four methyl group. So tetramethylsilane. Okay, so this is the standard that used for the protons and the carbon enema. Part three, explain why CdCl3 is a better solvent than the CHCl3 in the proton enema. Uh, because in the CHCl3 there is a proton and this proton will produce signals if you use it then it will is kind of like it will uh, form extra signals which will uh, make the proton enema more complicated so therefore we use the solvents okay, with the deuterium this deuterium uh, will not produce any signals in proton enema Okay, because it's this one. Uh, we say that uh, this deuterium has no extra spin to form the signal. Right, so it's very easy and straightforward. CDCL3 will not give absorption or peak in this NMR. That's why we use it. Part C. An impure sample of the this lactic acid, it contains pentane 3 uh, non. So this is the ketone, uh, which look like this one. And this one is the only contaminant, means in the sample has these two compounds only. The mixture is analyzed using the gas uh, liquid chromatography, the GC. And this uh, pentanon is uh, found to have a longer retention time. Uh, this is a very important uh, signal or uh, information. Because when they say longer retention time means uh, this pentanon uh, can uh, interact better with the column. So it will stay longer. And if we compare this uh, lactic acid and this pentanon, lactic acid is more polar. And the pentanon is uh, uh, relatively less polar. So when uh, this pentanon can uh, interact well with the column means the column also need to be relatively non-polar uh, that, that's, that's a hint means this uh, sentence telling you the column that use is must be relatively non-polar means the material in the column is non-polar liquid so now Explain what it means by retention time. Uh, so time taken between the sample injection and detection. Uh, this is from the mark scheme. So what is this? Um, for this one uh, taken from the textbook, uh, this is uh, how the GC uh, looks like or GLC looks like. So this one is the main unit and inside this uh, unit is has uh, inside this uh, uh, this oven uh, is has the column so the column is a uh, uh, is a very tiny capillary and is in the coil form and this one this is a place for the injection we have the sample and we will inject through this port and this sample will carry by a mobile phase normally we use gas and the gas is inner gas the inner gas, uh, why we use inner gas? Because it won't react with the sample. And this inner gas, it will bring the sample, go through the column, and after that, get out from the column and detects by detector here. This is a detector. So means, after it's being detected, it will form signals. So the retention time we will get from the signals here. And therefore, the retention time is the time that taken from the samples that inject here until it's being detected. So this we call retention time, which is something like this. This is uh, the in more details. 
how it looks like. Because uh, in the question it says that the pentanon is has a longer retention time. So therefore it can stay longer in this column and eventually it will elute later. Uh, so it's elute, let's say, let's say, this is just actually, this is just example, uh, it's not actual one. So it's elute at longer time. So in this diagram is, let's say, about uh, 17 to 18 minutes. But the lactic acid is relatively polar. It won't really interact with the, uh, well, with the column. So it will elute earlier. So around, let's say, around five minutes. Uh, so this one is the retention time. Means the retention time for lactic acid, let's say, uh, now is five minutes. Uh, the pentanone is around uh, this uh, 18 minutes, let's say. Uh, so this we call retention time. Part two, suggest suitable substance or types of uh, substance that could be used as the mobile phase and the stationary phase. I told you already, mobile phase in GC is the inner gas. So uh, you just use any one of this, argon, nitrogen, helium. So all these three can use, but you choose one. Stationary phase, I already told you just now, from the information is telling us, is a non-polar material. So non-polar material, actually uh, you can suggest any. Uh, uh, it's not really that specific. But if you really want to give a good answer, which is really, uh, uh, relates to the actual column that we used, uh, so you give this answer, dimethyl polysiloxane. So this is a siloxane, uh, the, 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 the chain, the backbone, and the silicon is uh, actually bonded to the methyl, and the methyl is actually non-polar. That's why this uh, stationary phase uh, is a non-polar stationary phase because it has a lot of methyl groups. Okay, again, the name is dimethyl polysiloxane. Uh, this is uh, uh, what I suggest to you. You can use others actually. Okay, now uh, last part. Describe how the percentage of composition of the mixture can be determined uh, from this GCR. Percentage of composition. Uh, means if let's say we want to know percentage of some compound, how we identify that. Uh, so we use area of the peak of the compound divided by the total area of the uh, these all peaks of all uh, uh, compounds in the sample. So means let's say let's say in this mixture we have lactic acid and pentanone, and we will know the area under the peak here from the pentanone and the area of the lactic acid. Let's say we want to know the percentage of lactic acid. So we, we just um, uh, calculate, means we get the area of this lactic acid over the total area of these two times 100%. So we will know the percentage of the lactic acid inside the mixture. So this is how we do. Huh? So just describe okay, how to get the percentage composition. So we use the area of the peak of the compound and total area to get it. Right. Of course, here after divide, you need to times 100. Right. But this is just a description. Okay, I hope you understand. And uh, extra information uh, for you is the, the column. The column that we use here inside this, uh, this uh, column oven, so this column, uh, the cross section is this one, right? So normally it can code by many material. Uh, in this question, uh, is more related to the first one. So it's actually a liquid stationary phase that coated on the wall of the column. So it's an inner wall. And the uh, this is the, the, the hollow structure. The gas will pass through this. At the same time, it's bring the samples interact with this uh, this stationary phase and okay this one in this question this layer should be a non-polar layer means non-polar stationary phase okay that's all thank you i hope you understand